today we are talking about the difference between a planner, a coordinator, a designer, and a director. And those are four terms that get interchanged so frequently. And I'm so passionate about differentiating between the four because they are completely different. So let's start with Jay here. And Jay, you tell me what you think the difference is between the four. So let's start with planner. So to me, a planner is someone who handles all aspects of the event, not just a wedding, an event. You're more like a facilitator than anything and trying mm -hmm. to keep everybody in line, being mm -hmm. where they're gonna be. You do that well, by the way. Your timelines, I've said this a million times, her timelines are stupid. Military. It is. And if you can figure out a way to, if you can, if you don't know what's happening in one of your events, there's something wrong. You literally haven't read because That's a week problem. before she's sending out minute by minute, like when the doors are going to open, when the music's going to start, who's going to be where at what time, what's going to be brought to the venue or what's going to be brought to everybody's got a task and every task is defined in that timeline down to the second. That is what a planner does. Not only is it about logistics, but it's also about the psychology of communication with everybody involved. Because the closer you get with most people, the closer you get to the event, the crazier people get when it comes to emotions. And you are handling... You can manage that, though. You can. and But you do a really good job at... Calming. Yeah. It it's is. Just good coordination. Well, people just don't know. They, they good have, communication, not coordination. They have no idea, though. Okay, so what does a designer do? So a designer is a visionary, and not mm -hmm. all coordinators are designers. A lot of them cheat. Or planners. Or planners, I should say, because coordinators planners. are coming later. So not all planners are designers. That is In very, fact, very different. It's most very of them. Rare. And most of them are. They're, most of them are designers. Most of them aren't designers, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Because they are good at logistics, but they have horrible taste, most of them. Most of them have horrible hair, horrible clothes, but that's a different story. Horrible makeup. Okay. You know, black leggings and a schmock is not... What's a schmock? It's like, like, like that drapey thing you would wear to cover up your ass, like when you're wearing leggings. Oh. It's, it's just bad. There's, okay. Designer. What is a designer? Designer like? is the one who listens to their client and finds out what their vision is and then makes it come to reality in a extraordinarily creative way. Uh -huh. That's a, that's really what a designer does. Mm -hmm. When you pair a designer and a planner together, you have like a multi... A dream It's pretty good. World. It's pretty good. Yeah. And we've seen some amazing stuff. Yeah. I've seen some pretty shitty stuff, I'll be honest with you. And what does a coordinator do? So a coordinator basically shows people how to walk down the aisle. They line no, people up. No, a coordinator is 30 days out. Oh, you mean like a... That's a director. Well, okay, so thanks for that. Because the coordinators are... Coordinating the shit show 30 days before. So when they're just not involved imagine, beforehand. So just imagine you walking into a job and somebody else has been doing the job not well up to this point and all of a sudden you're going to hand somebody five thousand three thousand a thousand dollars to take over it 30 days into this shit show that's been going on for a year and they're supposed to step up and be able to take control of everything logistics vision planning coordinating like all of it it doesn't work it's terrible and most of the time it makes it terrible for us uh the vendors um and it has been i've i've had some just that's why we don't do that anymore and then a director is the director is the day of kind mm -hmm. of thing so imagine that i tell people all the time it's like we're just gonna hire a day of i was like that okay doesn't exist. well it's why it's, would you do that it's a nightmare why you have to plan that's the church ladies and have basically a timeline in order to execute well it's, just, well, it's just like anything else we do. The more time we put into it, the better the outcome Absolutely. is. Absolutely. But when you literally just, you know, you've got a church lady that's, her main interest is making sure that the church is, or the venue is taken care of. She doesn't really care about you. She's just going through the motions to get you down that aisle and get you out of her venue. Or him, I should say, too. I don't want to be sexist. Don't be sexist. But, but it's, that's exactly what their, their main goal is. So if you're going to be a coordinator... 
or you better know who the vendors are ahead of time and where the venue is at because that can set you up for failure if you ask those questions. Ninety nine percent of the time, it's a and then if you're going to be a director without a timeline, you might as well just set yourself on fire and burn. I, well. You're you're asking not only but it affect it's it's a ripple effect. It doesn't just affect you. You know the the vin, the we had that we had a wedding this past year that I told you she didn't have a planner. She didn't. Mm -hmm. She had a day of coordinator that was coordinating the event. Nobody knew whether or not flowers was supposed to go on her mm -hmm. cake or not. Nobody answered or asked me the question. So clearly there's a difference now. That's, that's the, just the tip of the iceberg. The, I can't, okay, I, so it would ta I could talk about this all day. Yeah, but we're gonna move on because the next thing that I wanna say, aside from those four different things, you also have hotels, golf courses, country clubs, and they have your in-house salesperson, which is in charge of typically selling the space letting you know what they have in stock, like tables, chairs, linens. Um, they don't really get into the details and possibly the food in the bar. And beyond that, they're that's, not your planner. That's the role. That's and, it. And also the turnover rate is very high because people work 80, 90, 100 hours during busy season. And if you're not used to that, you the burn burnout out. rate's crazy. And it's not even about the money. It's about quality of life. And balance. I could, I've I've looked I've looked at those people and been like, oh my god, they were here yesterday at the other event I did here, mm -hmm. and they're still here. But one day we're gonna do a conference for all the hotel people and all of the country club people, and bring them together in one room and teach them and show them and role play how to educate a bride on what their role is and why they should hire a planner. And then if they want the visionary, why that's a designer. And some companies do both. Like we do both. Um, I'm blessed with both. But someone else in my company focuses on the logistics. I still go back and look at it because it's going to play into the design. But it's a very different role and it's a very different brain type. This is another, this is, well, and also there are some planners that, are visionaries and good at it. However, they want to execute. And I think that is a very bad uh, use of your time as the visionary. There's people that can execute if you're a good leader, what you want done. You don't need to be executing. There's several out there that think they have to put their hands on everything and that is not good. Mm -mm. So we'll end this a topic with something that you've always said to me. Uh oh. This is, da -da -da. I know, right? She's actually taking my advice for a change. No. I love did, learning I from my friends. So to wrap it up, we'll say, do what you know and, and know, know what, what you, you do. do. So find not only your passion, but what you are amazing at. And do it. And do it. And stick to it. And don't try to be everything to everybody. Like, that's okay. It's the, it's the worst thing you could do for you and your brand and, and your employees. Honestly, the people that work with you and even your vendors, it's the worst thing you can do. So, yeah, do what you know and know, know what you do. Bam. I'm glad that stuck. That's good. Bam. Are we going to do this? Bam. I'm not cool enough to do that, but whatever. My favorite segment. Sorry, not sorry. Go. So, today, we're going to talk about, we're not sorry that you called off your engagement and you expect your money back or not to pay what your contract says that you've signed up for. Mm. Mm. This has happened a lot. Yeah, oh, unfortunately, yeah. as a business owner in the wedding business, in the wedding space, it's very emotional money, and we get it, and we're people, and we have hearts. And oh, that's yeah. why most of us, like me, we have a business manager who manages the business. And unfortunately, if you just call off your engagement or you just can't get along and your contracts say that your deposits or retainers are non-refundable, that means they're non-refundable. Because we were planning on that revenue, whether it be a venue or being a planner. Or your employees. Or your employees. You already promised that they were going to work that weekend. You still have to pay people. They still like to eat. Um, whether your life falls apart or not, basically. Right. Your emergency is not our emergency in business. And so... Well, so let's just clarify there. It's business. It doesn't right. mean that we're not... Sorry. ...sympathetic or sorry. But it's when it comes... It's probably best if well, you just... 
part ways. But let know? me tell you how to combat this. Okay. You are very, very, very um, transparent about what the expectation is from the very beginning. It's written out in your contracts if you do contracts. Um, you should you be very do a contract. Well, Cover your ass. I mean, in some ways, it's protecting you. But it, like when the, with our, let's talk about just a little bit with our. Um, and we I'm not going to get minutes. too far. I know I'm not going to get too far off on a contract, but we'll talk about contracts in a, in another time. They're important, but just be very very transparent and communicate directly about what your expectations are. Level your ability with their expectations and vice versa. You will avoid a lot of. And be very specific in the contract. We have military people all the time that get deployed. All right? That's not their fault. That's not my fault. But they typically move the date up or down, and we can move that revenue around you know, month by month. And accommodate you most typically. of the time. But when your life falls apart because you are so emotional and you're having a crisis because whatever or your husband cheated on you or your wife cheated on you or your to fiance be, yes. yeah your fiance is cheating i can't i can't combat that with my business i can't jeopardize my well-being my staff's well-being my vendors relationship with my vendors because your life is a shit show we can't do nobody does business like that so we're not sorry i'm not sorry i'm not sorry and i'm not going to do your cake and i'm not going to give your money back so so the first thing we have for I do, I don't is custom, a custom design versus copying a design if a client brings Ooh, it into you. Ooh, this is a good topic. Yeah, I ain't doing that. I mean, there's, so I've been brought cakes um, for people that, they bring me pictures of cakes that other people have done. Well, you know, I know most of the people in this industry, like mm -hmm. around the world. Yeah. I mean, really and truly, I've been doing it a long time. But that's not why you and come to him. No, I do custom cakes. That's the whole point. If you want a cookie cutter Customized cake. Customized to you. Yeah, go to a commercial bakery. Go to Publix. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. It's perfectly fine. I'm not hating on that. My point is. I don't like to copy. I'm not copying. Well, I'm not. I mean. I I'll, like to be unique. This is how you can clarify who your clients are. If ooh, you want sure. uniqueness and custom, then those are the clients that are looking for you and that you should say yes to. But if they're looking for 30 round tables in a ballroom at a hotel with all the same linens and all the same flowers and it's just there's no design whatsoever, there's no need for us to be involved. Well, and there's no reason to pay us to custom to do custom no, work. Because you're paying for creativity. And you're not. And you're not wanting anything creative. So I get it. It's not a dig at the folks who want that or who do that. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. Just but not our client. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so not the next doing one it. is uh, charging hourly versus a flat rate. Well, you learned this lesson, didn't you? It's something else he taught me. So, several of you, my you, business... Thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, we have to be efficient. Charge hourly. Yes. Like, I think flat rates can be okay. So, for example, if you say work, you know, you get 40 hours for a flat rate of this amount of money. People don't, people don't understand what your 40 hours looks like, though. They can eat up 40 hours of planning in like a... Two like, days. Yeah. Because it's 12 to 16 hour days and then suddenly they have buyer's remorse because they don't know what your hours look like. The same thing with cake, all right? They don't, they see what's on TV and they see that TV, you can do this amazing cake in, in 42 minutes on an episode of a tell, which literally takes a week to produce one five tiered wedding cake if you're doing it well and doing it correctly. So... We, we can't do by the hour. We can't. I mean, by the flat, flat rate. rate. Because people don't know what flat rate 40 hours of work looks like. But it also goes into creativity. And so tracking your time, and it's something that many business coaches as well as Jay taught me that even if you do it for a year and you don't charge that way, it is just good for yourself to know how much your time is worth. And then I promise you the following year, when you take 30, 50, 100 events and weddings, you will reevaluate how you're spending your time and how your client's paying you. I have a quote. Okay, so I the have next a quote. one. Hold on. I have a quote for this. Because well, why I, he finds a quote. I think it's important because this is a, this is a good 
So I want to, 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 to share something that just because somebody doesn't value you, it does not make you less worth. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean that you're not valuable. It doesn't mean, just because they don't value what you do, it doesn't mean you're not worth what you do. And that is exactly what this, this ties into because people cannot, there's nothing tangible for them to see what you're doing until toward the end, really. The last so day it, when you're giving is, birth. Yeah. And that's when they finally can have kind something to, to sync up to with all the hard work yeah. that you've done. Same with yeah. the cake. Like, it's it's a bad idea. You need to track your time. Absolutely, you don't need to do 100%. flat rates. Okay, so flipping a room. Oh my god, I love it when they tell me, "Well, you can't deliver the cake until this because we have to flip the room." I'm like, if I have a choice, it's, I think it's a bad idea. But do we do it all the time? <laughs> well, you have to. Do with I some like venues, it? No. It's it's tough. Mm -hmm. Like it's I've seen you flip a room twice. We you, flipped a room six times because in of, uh, 48 hours for an Indian for an American, Indian -American wedding. wedding. It's yep. kind of crazy to flip a room. Yeah. Six times. Holy crap. But you have to have a lot of hands mm -hmm. and a lot of people and a lot of labor. And you have to plan ahead of time so that you know what two people are picking up chairs and what two people are picking up the nuts off the floor and what two people are going to vacuum and what. So it really takes planning ahead. Okay, the next one. Well, and experience. You only know this by experience. You learn the hard way. Okay, what about a oh. cake dropping out of a ceiling? Boy, we've done this a bunch. Uh, thumbs up. So we did an event here in Nashville at the new Omni Hotel, which we love. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful. It is stupid beautiful. We're lucky in that since mm -hmm. we've said this before. So we had this huge event where I designed. It was it a was special a, event. It was I a, just got back from a there. Special event, and it's where so it's a um, it's a vendor highlight of the best of the best mm -hmm. uh, in design, in education, in Jennifer's great. And they do an amazing yep. job. Mosaic. So, yeah, Mosaic. If you ever get the chance to go to the special event, it's amazing. So they asked me if I would design cakes mm -hmm. for the special event and to showcase what we can do. And they make. So I come up with this idea to design these four cakes. And I asked them, I was like, can we create these barrel lights? And a barrel light's just like a tube light that's in the ceiling. But inside the barrel light are cakes that are hidden throughout the whole night. Like it was above the dinner tables in this giant ballroom. On motors. And then all of a sudden, I said, I want them on remotes so that during the middle of the event, we can lower the cakes out of the lights and present in the middle of the ballroom between the tables and everything. It was sick. phenomenal. And now we've done that a lot of times for brides too. So thumbs up for that. I think it is an amazing um, interactive way it's to present. It's just a wow factor. I mean, it's fucking boring, okay? We're putting a cake on a round table in the middle of a damn crowd while everybody... Not in my wedding. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sick of it. So you can be more creative. People need to pay for that, by the way. That is expensive. There's a lot of people that made that happen. It is an investment on your guest experience. Another great segment that we do here on JNN Ange is um, something random. So my something random this week, and hopefully you can shed some insight on this, because I saw, as I did with those pearl parties, whatever the hell that is. I still don't understand. I don't understand it either. But you need to look on Facebook at a per, the pearl parties, these women that sit there and do that. But anyway, so something random that I saw this week, I get a lot of my content from Facebook because this is stupid. Have you seen the girls get on there? And they prop their phones up like on something and they're giving makeup tips to their audience. And they have like lots of followers and they literally like, well, this one girl was on there. Her eyebrows look like fucking like somebody with a black marker. Like she literally, and they were like down here almost touching and she's in there like, well, do that's it. a thing now. It's called like razor blading or something. It looks awful. I mean, I'm pretty open to things, but these girls are on Facebook, and one of them's talking about going tour, going on tour. She's going to be in in the ATL, and she's going to be that? Atlanta and and Bama, and and you can come and watch her demonstrate how to put on this makeup. Yes, and there like, are people who are doing makeup tours. I actually was helping plan one, but the girl that was doing the tour, she does a lot of 
celebrities and well, people in the public but eye. Hold on. You get your makeup done too, okay? And it looks really beautiful. Andrew's great. But let me just tell you, this girl, these girls should not be teaching anybody to do makeup. They look like scary people. Well, this is where it's like in the gray. You know, it's like to be... There ain't nothing gray about no, this. No, no, no. I'm just saying like... To be a doctor, you have to go to medical school, right? Mm -hmm. I, our Hopefully. industry is so great. And then, but like to get on Facebook and like give tips or whatever, and you should give tips if you're make if you know how to do makeup. But if your makeup looks like shit, like well, not just what like shit, it literally you? looks scary. And what qualifies them exactly to if go you have out? A bad dream. But it's like those people I tell you that come and take a class from me, and then all of a sudden they're, they're trying an to book, expert. They're booking classes all over the blame country. That to teach how to decorate cakes. Oh my God. I saw the worst random yesterday. I'm at a cake baker person with a bride. You cheat on and me. No, you said you didn't want to do it. Anyway, it's a huge freaking what? Anyway, so she like pulls up this cake and this person put like a board and a like five tier cake on top of like this huge ruffle cake. And I'm like that my eye went to that immediately. A board. You know, like, like cover your board. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a cake board. Oh, it was so random. And Wait, the bride's like, inside the design? Just all, just like. Yes. It wasn't like a board and a cake. It was like a board and a cake and another board. And then it just what was the? extremely sloppy. And then two of. You're going to miss me when I'm gone. You're not going anywhere. Shut up. So two of the tears had these like. Things that you sprinkle, but they were like the kind that you like, they're edible, but if you got some fake teeth like me, you yeah. might bite on so it. it's dry, It's going to fall days. out. Yeah. And I told the bride, I'm like, uh, if I was those. at your wedding, I would not eat that. No, well, that's bad. You should not. So anyway, that was my random. You can get sued, like break people's dentures with, just because you can put it on a cake don't mean you should. That's right. Now we're moving on to pick my brain. And so for this week's episode, I want to share with you guys a question that one of the planners that I coach, um, I don't know where she lives, but she told me that her close rate was pretty low and she was trying to educate herself and has been to a couple conferences and webinars and she said that this one company, which is a pretty reputable company in the wedding industry. You're not going to tell us, are you? No. Said that um, I'm because I'm professional. And so, and I actually like this company. But anyway, on the webinar, they were saying that when someone contacts you, you should not immediately jump in and, and say congratulations and ask them for a meeting or a FaceTime or a phone call. And I told her I completely disagree with that. First off, they have a problem, challenge, issue. You're an expert. They're contacting you. Why would you not ask for the business? Like, but, I don't have time for so that. So let's just step back and look at the fundamentals of somebody reaching out to you for your services. Like, out of good customer service, like, we have a rule, like, way less than 24 hours, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. We're going to reach out to you, at least engage with you. And if you're smart and productive, you'll just use software. That's true. We And we do that. So mm -hmm. that's... We, we do it. We do it. It's good because it alleviates you from having to have a real person that you're paying to actually respond yeah. immediately. And it doesn't have to, that doesn't mean it's impersonal, but I don't understand the fact of reaching out and congratulating someone and just saying, welcome. Yes, we're interested in you. Like, like why do we want to BS back and forth? But that's like, a waste of time. Let's get to the point. You want to meet me? You, and it's not a, a lot of people. She was saying that they're just, how much do you cost? And it's like, well, you need to understand what I do first before we're even going to get to the number. Well, and so if that's the most important, then not, not your client. Exactly. And it's okay to say, I'm booked. I can't, I, well, I'm not the baker for you. I'm not the planner for you. Or I can't give you a price until I understand what you're looking for. And do you have a budget? But, but, ugh, I hate that word. You know that. Because I if, know, but that's what brides are looking for sometimes i know but the thing about it is just because it's not our client it doesn't mean that other people out there can't help i get it but if you've got someone that is that conscientious about money that's wanting the services like what we provide which is 90 percent probably of the people that's in this industry striving to do to do custom custom design custom planning custom cake like that's who the vendors mm -hmm. want to work with and that's who 
that's what make up most of this industry. Even brides, most brides want something unique to them. Sure. That comes it's a with whole a price. different level. It comes with a price tag. And you being get what able you pay for. and vetting those people in the initial conversation of congratulating them and inviting them into what you do is absolutely essential to to um, to cultivate the right relationship. To and create. the brand. Well, exa- well. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in to Shay and Ann. I thought this was really good today. Yes. Please follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. We do a we do we try to do Instagram live several times. So please follow, share, and leave your comments below. Um, Present Bulletin is where you can find our episodes and we're releasing on YouTube. On YouTube. Um, so go re- uh, search Present Bulletin, Jay and Ange on YouTube and you'll find us. Please like us, share with all your friends, and we invite you back every single time and listen to what we got to say. We're doing this for you guys, so let us know what you want us to talk about and we'll be happy to share our opinion. Full disclosure. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Olivia. Love you. Love you.